Well, the fact that you can make a call, browse the internet or even watch a live broadcast of ET Now, it's all thanks to the Indian Space Research Organization and India Space Mission. With the unveiling of the new space policy, India will now witness private players, especially Indian space tech startups, entering this space and stepping up their skin in the game. To talk to us about the new space policy and the exciting new world of Indian space tech startups, we have with us Mr. Bhavan Goenka, Chairperson of InSpace. First, sir, uh, take us through what the key highlights of the new space policy are and how it will allow private players to step up their game in the space sector. Well, uh, thank you for having this uh, program. Uh, I think it's uh, very important to understand the background uh, that has led to the uh, new space policy. Uh, it's really uh, part of a bigger vision of Government of India to open up the space sector uh, to the private sector for two purposes. One is the economic value that it can create for the country, uh, and I'll come to that. And second is the social benefit, or societal benefit that the opening up of space will bring uh, to, to the general public in India. Uh, and the policy is just one of the several things that have been done by government in the last two to three years uh, to make that happen. Uh, now, the new space policy, as you said, uh, does open up the whole space sector for the private sector, which up until recently was off limits uh, for private sector and everything uh, was necessarily done by ISRO. Uh, ISRO is very much part of the future of space, but private sector will be a core traveler uh, in that in the journey of, uh, of the new space in India. And that's what the policy names. What the policy does, in effect, is open up the full space sector, every aspect of space sector, to the private sector in India. For example, the private sector can now build rockets, build satellites, it can launch its own uh, rockets, it can operate, operate space assets, it can deliver commercial services, it can own technology, it can do earth observation data, anything it wants, private sector can play. Right? Uh, and it will transfer, and we will transfer the ISRO technology to the private sector. The process already started, so the private sector doesn't have to start ground up. What ISRO has done up until now in the last 50, 60 years, that becomes a starting point for the private sector, and that's a big benefit that the private sector will have in India. Now, what will it lead to? Today, as you said, the space economy in India is only about eight to ten billion dollars uh, out of 450 billion dollars uh, global space economy which for a country like India, that really is fairly advanced in terms of space technology and space infrastructure, probably amongst the top five, six in the world. I think it's a very small number. So one thing that it will do is take us from the eight to $10 billion to let's say 40, $50 billion in the next eight to 10 years. That will be our aspiration on how do we bring private sector to play uh, in the space economy and move the space economy from eight to uh, 40, let's say. The second part that will do is the real benefit of this space uh, comes from Earth observation data. That means all the photographs that we can take from space, all the data that we can collect, and how do we translate that data for use of uh, civil society? Uh, for example, farmers, how they would know about uh, uh, weather, how they will know about soil condition, how will they know, know about any natural disaster, uh, for fishermen, how do they know where to go and fish for urban planning, for infrastructure planning, for railways, all of these things. Uh, how do we translate this space data to for use of common, common man? And that will be the big benefit that will come, even bigger than the economic value addition that will happen. Uh, the big benefit that will come with private sector's participation in space. ISRO is doing all of these things today, um, but a lot of it is not reaching the last mile. And that's where the private sector has to come in and take it to the last mile so that we are able to get full benefit of what the space can can do do for us and leverage everything about the space for a day-to-day -day operation. Well, AgriTech is just one piece of the pie. Could you take us through, uh, you know, the other sectors that we could see flourishing in the next few years? So earth observation was one uh, one sort of sector in space uh, that uh, is obvious to us. The second sector is communication, the whole satellite communication. But of course, we uh, everything that we see today, the television broadcasting, uh, all that happens through uh, through uh, space, uh, space satellite. Uh, 
uh, but more and more of communication happening through satellite broadband is something that India is lacking in today. And what we are hoping is that we'll be able to bring satellite broadband into India in the next three to five years uh, using many of the existing players outside India or emerging players outside India, such as uh, Starlink, Amazon, OneWeb, uh, Telenet. There are many such services that are that are beginning to come up now uh, that we'll be looking at uh, under the new policy.